Well, hello everyone. Welcome to AB Start Select number three. Good evening. We have uh, BP Skivenheims here with us, like usual. Wait, where where is he? Uh, probably at home. Uh, guys, we pretty call him. Pretty get him on here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got some good things to talk about this week. No Destiny news for the first <laughs> time in three weeks. Um. So if you're here to hear me complain about Destiny some more, it's going to be a sorry show, I think. <laughs> so what's up, Mr. Skibbs? Uh, not much. It's been a long, long day at work, but happy to be home and finally kick back and BS about some games. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can hear that. Makes sense. It is what we're here for. Yeah. All right, so if you followed the format at all, we're going to start out with um, some rage-inducing topics, at least for me. Now, some of the topics we're going to go over this week, I guess, are a little unfairly slanted towards my commenting. <laughs> Although Skibbenheims <laughs> did pick out one of them on the docket this week, so I'm I sure got, I got two. You've, yeah, you did. Yeah, you, two. I'm sorry. <laughs> I actually have a lot to say about the second one, though. So, hope everyone's having a great day. Um, we're going to jump into this. First topic on the board uh, is something that hits near and dear to me as a large supporter of Nintendo. And some of the. And we'll get to some other things with Nintendo later on in the show. But if you haven't heard of Devil's Third, it's. Um, it's a hell of an interesting game to follow. It had a huge following whenever it was being developed first by THQ, I think. And uh, THQ went defunct, it was dropped. Or am I yeah, getting I my games mixed up? No, I think that's what I read, THQ. Anyway, um, it's Nintendo was rumored to be dropping it. They weren't even going to finish developing it um, after they picked up the development. And they received a lot of pressure from fans because the game was really, really built up. Really built up. And uh, Nintendo finally came out and in an official response and said, no, we're going to finish the game in Japan. It still doesn't have a North American rele or European release date yet, but they are officially going to release it in Japan. Here's the problem. It's terrible. It's... It is abysmally bad. It's kind of considered one of the worst <laughs> games to be about to be released ever. Bad. Like Maybe. Bad. Yeah. Um, it may be the game that gets me to buy a Wii U. No. <laughs> it may get, be the game that gets you to buy a Wii U and then throw it out the window. Yeah. No, I, and I watched some gameplay of it um, here today, and yeah, it's it's it was pretty... It was pretty awesome in all the wrong ways. Uh, I did read, you know, they said they weren't going to or didn't have plans of releasing it in North America. Apparently, Nintendo of America tweeted, I guess it was today, that they will be. Um, but I don't know if that's truly a firm commitment or what. That's something I read here just moments before we started. Um, and I watched a video of some people playing one that seemed to be completely... Uh, dubbed and ready in English. so Well, there's a lot of development time that went into it before Nintendo ever picked it up. Yeah. Here's the problem. It's been said many times in the past that Nintendo as a company has done as well as it always has because when Nintendo puts its official... There's a rigorous um, testing process that Nintendo takes to put its official seal on things. I know that they didn't want to disappoint fans by not releasing a game that was really highly looked for, but I feel like this could be a huge misstep at a really bad time to go ahead and release this in North America if it's already seeing the horrible reviews <laughs> and gameplay that it's got so far. Yeah. Uh, now, no, it's not a fully 100% Nintendo-developed product, but Nintendo is very guarded about what it puts its seal on and 
some people have criticized them for that because the the process cuts a lot of games out that maybe a lot of Nintendo fans would love to play. But it's also considered one of the bigger selling points of Nintendo. They truly release really fun, good games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, it kind of being a big deal even back in the the Super Nintendo era. To, to if you, you know, made a game that got that and got that kind of approval, it was a big deal. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I watched some gameplay footage of it. As far as the type of game, I mean, it's it looks like it's all over the place, all over the board. Uh, I don't know. I it just looks completely. You take a company who notoriously is known for not releasing mature type games, and then you put yeah. a an extremely mature subject matter game on a system that's not even selling well to begin with. I don't know. Uh, now, you're talking going back to the days when Nintendo really put the seals out, but that was because originally you had to have a chip in the cartridge that Nintendo sold you to put the game on the cartridge. Oh, yeah. And that was how Nintendo prevented um, third-party stuff from skipping that. Now, I actually have some Tengen carts. that The black one, like the black cartridges for the original NES... Because if you read up about Tengen as a company, they basically reverse manufactured the Nintendo chip and started releasing their own games. Got a huge lawsuit over it. <laughs> huge lawsuit. But it's interesting to watch Nintendo <clears throat> struggle to do anything right now, and yet we're going to release a game that's quite obviously going to be a bad game. Just because some fans wanted it. Yeah. Sometimes fans are not right, by the way. Sometimes we are not <laughs> right. Uh, it happens a lot. I don't yeah, know. I don't know what to say about it. You know, I watched some videos of it, and it was it was pretty <laughs> phenomenally bad. The first thing you know, you said it earlier, maybe the Daikatana of games, and watching videos of it, Daikatana was the first thing that popped into my head. Yeah, I I think naturally both of us go to that because we were such fans of what that game was supposed to have been. You know, one of the things in a few different video reviews that I watched and also read in an article I read that was reviewed that was funny to me is, is there were multiple instances where they actually went as far as to say that you know, certain aspects about the game were so bad that they were almost good yeah. in that sense. But this one article, they really, uh, the way they stated it was great. It said, so bad it's good can apply to parts of Devil's Third. But not once did I think the developers were in on the joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like the uh, the old cult classic movies that are just really bad, but they're still known because they're hilariously bad. Yeah. You know, I have a good friend that all they watch is like the sci-fi monster flick. Oh, stuff. Lord. They're, they're terrible. <laughs> but when you look at them that way, it becomes a fun experience to be around. Yeah, I Mystery don't see Science that in a video game. 3000 though. stuff. I've never played a video game that I thought was so bad it was good <laughs> that I can think of. Sober. I'm what hoping Harvester is it? that for me. Mark of Cree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed Mark of Cree <laughs> for what it was. Uh, Harvester, actually, Harvester is hilariously. I mean, Harvester isn't. It, it was. They tried to do too much. But it's kind of like near. They try to do too much, but if you take it for what it is, it's actually a very interesting narrative game. Yeah. I've seen a playthrough, a full playthrough of it, and I had nightmares later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. So, yeah. Uh, go check out Devil's Third. Um, it's interesting to watch fans be wrong about something really badly. And not that fans are wrong because they wanted the game. A lot was promised, like usual happens with game development. Lots promised, yeah. but it's quite obvious Nintendo had no clue how to finish this game, and it's just scrapped together. Moving on to number two, something that actually it doesn't apply to Skipping Hives and I at this moment. It might in the future. It might not. It's not something that we bank on, but um, talk for a bit about money in gaming as far as players and money um 
because I'm interested to know what you how you chime in on this, given because I know how I feel about this whole deal. And this is in relation to someone that I do not follow. I am not a fan of most YouTube Let's Players. I, it's not my thing. I watch a couple. So, this would be in specific reference to uh, PewDiePie and his huge outcry of hate against him for the amount of money he's making playing video games. I'm going to let you start. You know, um... I'm jealous of the guy. Honestly, I, think I do most think, are. I, I, yeah, and I think that's where a lot of the hate comes from. You know, the outcry, the the out, really outspoken hate. But um, I, I do think it's crazy that somebody can make that much doing what they're doing. But at the same time, if they can make that much doing that kind of work, not even it's not really work, but doing that. I'm now. Wait in a the, I'm in the camp of more power. I don't hate him for it. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean it's not even work? Well, it's work, but that's part of I think where the outcry cry comes from. It's video games. Okay. It's something most people do for fun. So miss and so people have a hard time a hard time separating that. But YouTubers tend to the big ones put dozens of hours into a video. Uh, oh, know, yeah. A 45 minute video may take 10 hours to actually edit and piece together. And that's probably way under. I don't know. I don't yeah. do a lot of YouTubing, but. You know, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if he does not have people, paid people. I'm sure he has paid people that help him with that now. Oh, I'm sure he does too. But here's, here's I guess, what I want to focus on more than anything else is people are so full of hatred that someone can do what they probably want to do that they've taken to, and I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of the guy. I don't like his stuff. He's a moron to me, but I think he's done an amazing job at turning something he loves to do into a career. And I think that's what everyone wants. Yeah. Everyone wants that. And if you read some of the, I mean, he, this has gone back for several months because he's turned comments off on his videos. I remember that whole thing being a while back. The amount of hate he's received after this report on his income, which first off, why is that anyone's business? I mean, how much someone makes is not for anyone else to criticize. Yeah. Um, but And he's not doing anything illegal. He's not robbing from people. Correct. Right. You right. Know, I he's mean, not scamming people, skirting barely, you know, doing something that's barely legal. He's Entertaining. Whether it's it, entertaining to you or not doesn't matter. He's entertaining people and he's making money doing it. Right. And it blows my mind how much hate is just... It's the internet. Of course it's full of hate. But in this particular instance, I mean, the guy's doing a job... You you and I stream... You know, I, I probably stream a little bit more a week than you do simply because... I don't know. My I don't know. I, I do have the Sunday stream, but... Yeah, I mean, we're putting 20 plus hours in on top of a 40 minimum 40 hour a week job. There are times when those 20 hours, it's it's unpaid, sometimes unpaid labor almost is what it feels like. It's it's hard sometimes to turn the stream on and sit there for three or four hours, even with having great support from our channels that we do. It doesn't mean you always want to be doing that, even though you love doing it. Yeah, I, I I don't get hate in that way. I mean, hate the guy because you don't like his videos or whatever else. I don't hate someone because they make more money doing something they like than you do. Yeah, <laughs> I just find that to be ludicrous. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't I don't get it. Um, although from what I understand, his response to it is basically he's just kind of shrugged it off. I mean, what can he say? Yeah, I've... haters gonna hate. I mean. For... That's true. Uh, it amazes me, but you know, a lot of things on the internet amaze me these days. And the only reason yeah. why that does, it, it does kind of apply because I think you know we're always any t person that's streaming on Twitch on a schedule for X number of hours a week would love for that at some point to become their job, I think. I think that would be awesome. It doesn't mean we ever believe that's going to happen, but 
yeah. if something happened and it did, I mean, I don't think we're going to turn it down. No. So, no. guys, don't don't hate us when we're big and famous. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last topic for Rage Mode today, and this this is one that I probably have a little bit more to weigh in on than Skibbenheims does, but I think we agree on a lot of things. Um, Rock Paper Shotgun, which is a website that I typically read fairly often, um, released a top 50 computer role-playing games of all time list. And I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, I'm going to start with what they say is the number one. Now, keep in mind that computer role-playing goes way back. It goes way beyond the consoles. Computer role playing was like 1980, 81, uh, Ultima, Calabeth. We're going way back to the pen and paper graphing type simulations. The, the top number one game rated by Rock Paper Shotgun as the number one RPG of all time on a computer was Dark Souls 1. And a couple of things confuse me about this because I'm looking down the rest of their list and I had, a lot of them are spot on. Um, maybe I'm talking out my ass here, but most people that I know, if you ask them what the number one computer role-playing game of all time is, they're going to say one of two games. I just saw one come up in the chat. Baldur's Gate 2. Planescape Torment. That is pretty much going to be the epitome of the computer role-playing game. Dark Souls is a great game. I love Dark Souls. It's not really an RPG, and it wasn't even made for computers. It was ported to the PC after a console release. I don't, I've don't. i not been able to find the author of this article, and I'm assuming it's because it was a collaboration from a lot of different <laughs> authors. But or maybe after a few comments got posted, they redacted the name. <laughs> they pulled it, yeah, because it says by RPS, which is just probably usually what they do if it's collaboration. Why would you put Baldur's Gate? Let me see what number I think Baldur's Gate and Torment were two and three, but I can't remember which order it was. Um, Baldur's Gate two is number three. Yeah. Planescape Torment is number, was number two. two. Elder Scrolls Morrowind was number four. And Ultima 7, which is also up there with the Baldur's Gate crowd, it just depends on how early you got into PC gaming, is number five. So you have... And I'm leaving Fallout 1 and 2 out of there. Fallout 1 and 2 are also considered top tier. So you got both of the Fallout games, Baldur's Gate 2, Planescape Torment... And they picked Dark Souls, which is a port <laughs> from a console. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I understand that, the, that that game is popular, but from what I also, from what I understand, the reasons it's popular aren't generally the things that I think make a RPG good. Well, right. You know, it's popular because it's hard. Yeah. It reestablished the difficult game craze from the you late know. 80s. I'm not knocking that, but... Let me let's let's put it this way. Something, something it isn't. Typically, our, typically, the definition of an RPG, especially the computer RPGs, have stats. Dark Souls has stats. But you can fudge them any way you want to. You can have... You can go through the game... As a good streamer of ours has proven, you can go through the game with a fucking knife and never upgrade weapons or anything. It, it just, it's a horrible choice. I don't know why you would do that. Um, if you're going to have an article about PC computer RPGs, at least keep it to games that aren't ports over to the PC from something else, at, at the minimum. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It floors me because I started playing RPGs. My first RPGs ever were some of the gold box D and D RPGs from the late '80s. Um, 
and yeah, I, I was playing RPGs on my Apple II before I ever owned a Nintendo and got Dragon Warrior. Crazy, crazy stuff. I, I just Dark Souls one. I love that game. It's it's outside of Demon Souls. It is the best since Demon Souls, but it's not an RPG. And it definitely doesn't deserve the title of a computer or PC RPG at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're going to make a PC RPG list, it's got to be PC exclusive games. Think, or you might as well just make an RPG list. I think System everything. Shock 2 was high up on the list. Another yeah. first person shooter that had RPG. Deus Ex draws the is it an RPG? Is it an FPS? Those are hybrids. They're not PC RPGs. That, in my opinion. Just my opinion, but... Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, it's having some RPG elements doesn't, in my opinion, make a game RPG. Right. All right, so moving on. That's about all I have to, or all we have to rage about this week. It's usually me raging, though. <laughs> not usually you. So moving into the middle, uh, something also, again, probably near and dear to both you and I, and I know certain other people in the chat that are big Nintendo supporters. I don't think we could have a show without talking about uh, the CEO and president of Nintendo passing away on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, because it was during your Sunday stream. That Yeah. And I went back and watched the VOD from that stream, and... Everyone was talking and having a great time. Someone came in and announced that it happened. I thought they were joking. I, I Not joking, but I thought it was kind of fabricated. And uh, I don't know, for about two minutes, everyone was silent, including me. Yeah. I stopped playing the game that I was playing. So, And, and 55, that's not old. No, no. Um I do like one of the things that was posted. Uh, I'm trying to remember where this was. I'm looking at my notes here. Of course, uh, Mr. Iwata was at HAL before he went to Nintendo. Uh, he worked on Super Smash Brothers, Kirby, Pokemon Gold and Silver, Balloon Fight, uh, several other classic games. Uh, he didn't join the Nintendo until 2000. He's also the first of the non-family members that actually headed up Nintendo, which is an interesting yeah. side point. <clears throat> um, we owe a lot to him, and we by I say me, we, I'm incorrectly referring, Western gamers owe a lot to him. Um, he was really the person that brought over the philosophy of a global game market as opposed to east and west. Um, of course, the first time I remember ever hearing his name, Earthbound, yep, Earthbound was a good yep. one too. The first time I remember hearing his name, surprisingly enough, was the uh, the DS, uh, the Brain, oh, what was that thing called? Brain, brain Age. Training? Brain Age. Yeah, that's what it was, Brain Age. Because he's in it. Um he brought gaming to people that didn't play video games. Yeah. Which has been huge because I'm not sure Nintendo would be making it right now if it weren't for that. They've fallen behind in graphics. They've fallen behind in mature games. They basically exist off of their first-party content and their ability to uh, utilize new technology to bring people that aren't typically gamers into gaming. <clears throat> um... He's going to be big time missed. I think Nintendo is in for a rough couple of years now. Yeah. Shigeru yeah, Miyamoto kinda... is considered to be stepping in. The last I saw, as far as the rumors went, uh, of course, that's Zelda and Mario and really most of the Metroid, all those forerunners. Yeah. You know, something I've wondered um, is you never really know what's you know the internal atmosphere of a company and all that um i can only guess about nintendo but 
based on the way they operate and everything, I would tend to be the, tend to think that they they have a lot of um, desire to preserve the way they've been. And so, you know, I kind of would wonder if they're gonna continue to stay in in how they operate, what they release, how they deal with the you know the public streaming, um, just various things. If it's gonna remain the same in his you know in his kind of his vision i guess that he's put upon the company over his time there or could it possibly i don't expect it i guess is what i'm getting at but i guess there's a possibility they could change a lot too but not necessarily a good thing uh yeah and of course he's been criticized a couple times um earthbound's a big one nintendo has refused not earthbound but earth mother three yeah uh, Nintendo's refused to release it to the point where people, fans have patched English translations into it and they haven't even... Nintendo hasn't even gone after them. A, a company that's traditionally gone after anyone that touches their content has been hands-off and said, we don't really care because we have no plans to ever do it. It's been thought of that he was one of the reasons behind that. Um, I don't know. I, I did see a quote uh, that he had spoke that he had said that really resounds with me, and I don't remember where this was at. It was one of the conferences, but uh, he was quoted as saying, "On my business card, I'm a corporate president. In my mind, I'm a game developer, but in my heart, I'm a gamer." And honestly, I feel like if EA, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go off on a lot of it. EA, Ubisoft, um. Name any other big corporate gaming corporate Blizzard to some degree these days. Yeah, well, the Activision side. Activision, yeah. If any of those were ever quoted as saying anything like that, I would have respect for them, but they can't do that because no. they don't think like gamers at all. They're corporate it, money. That's it. Yeah, they're worried about their board meetings and stockholders and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, final point to this, I, I saw this uh, today when I was browsing. I thought this was interesting. Apparently, the day after uh, Mr. Iwata passed away, there was a rainbow that appeared over Nintendo corporate headquarters in Japan, and people basically called it the Rainbow Road for him yeah. uh, coming out of Mario Kart, which I thought was just humorous because I hated that damn death. <laughs> <laughs> rainbow Road, man. Ugh. Um, this is going to be brief because this did not turn into what I thought it would. I don't know if you paid attention to Amazon Prime Day at all today. I I looked around at it very, very little. Um, I did not see a whole lot that that got me excited. Keeping in mind, I've been an Amazon user for a long time. I love Amazon. This was the whole Amazon Prime Day was was quoted or they were quoted and of course it's all advertising but it was going to be bigger than Black Friday which that's a hell of a claim. <laughs> <laughs> First off, Amazon's site today looks terrible. It's impossible to browse. You notice that? If you try to get through all these deals that are like 1-hour lightning deals, you have to it, scroll it, through a bar of them and it's it's just unwieldy. It's not even Yeah, it's I don't know. Let me put it this way. I've watched on the hour, every hour, all day. I have yet to find something. I, a Chromebook was be about it. They had a Chromebook on sale for 200 bucks. I mean, if you if you go right now, you can get $5 off select Gillette Blades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many items on this Prime deal that are, like, geared towards home, uh, like, sanitization and grooming like just weird stuff so the only reason why I put this on the list is for those that don't know and that are Amazon Prime members I, I'm a Prime member if you're on Prime and you buy video games there are hidden discounts that will not show up until you go to your cart now I'm not talking about whenever you look at an item and it says regular price and then it's got a prime price there's actually hidden discounts that when you go to your cart I've tried I've tested it it, it, it is there and they're not like a dollar they're like eight bucks nine bucks on some of them here's a, what I don't get 
they want to sell things and make money. Why hide it that much? I don't. I don't get that tactic. It, I'm talking about just with video games now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not with but everything. I'm, just video games. You know, with anything. What? Well, why hide it? If you want people to buy it. Um. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. Someone told me about it about two weeks ago, and I didn't believe them. But I went and looked it up, and it it does exist. I could have gotten. Arkham Knight for about nine dollars cheaper than what I got it because I'm a Prime member. So, needless to say, I will now be looking at Prime before I pre-order my stuff. I, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe they are hiding it from publishers. Maybe maybe we hit turmoil's right. I don't know, but it's yeah, crazy. <laughs> so, I this was never supposed to be a huge talking point. I just wanted to let anyone else know that is a Prime subscriber. There are video game discounts you can get on Amazon if you are part of Prime. So, there you go. Next one, I'm going to let you lead off with. I'm going to put the, uh, the title up and tell you what it is because of the delay, but it is uh, Roofies and Video Games. <laughs> yeah, there was a news story that came out about a German gamer, uh, Xbox fan, that got caught and was arrested for roofing his girlfriend. Um, not for the typical reasons. So that she would go to sleep so he would have more time to play his games. I just... That's dedication. And I say that laughing with a smile on my face. Drugging somebody is no laughing matter. Let's get that out of the way. Unless it's yourself. Yeah, unless it's yourself. Well, that doesn't count. You know, that's serious. You, you, you don't do that. Um, and, and surprisingly, he did not get any jail time. $538 fine, I think, was what it was. Yeah. Now, I, you know, also a factor in that could be different country, <laughs> different penalties for, diff, you know, for crime. I would expect over here, so if somebody got caught doing that, regardless of any assault occurring on the Avenger, uh, individual after the drug takes effect or not, you know, because obviously that didn't happen in this case. I would expect somebody to go to jail. That's serious. Uh, actually, I wouldn't think so because unless this is one of those cases where the per if the person that was drugged pressed charges, maybe. But if they didn't want to pursue the case, then it would probably just be a misdemeanor of negligence of some sort. Which would carry a fine. I doubt you'd go to jail unless they wanted to say it was an assault, which technically it would be if you wanted to press charges for that. Yeah. And that would change things. Uh, but I don't know. I can't speak for the law. I, I would think it has a lot to do with the outcome of the person that was drugged. Um, I want to say this, speaking from personal experience, uh, I was married for three years. Uh, there were many times where I wanted to play video games instead of dealing with married things. <laughs> married things. <laughs> uh, did the thought ever cross my mind? No. Drugging never crossed my mind. More like, here's a hundred dollars, go do something. You know, go see a movie <laughs> or something. The fact that <laughs> someone would drug. This wasn't a wife. This was a girlfriend. To break up with her. Yeah. <laughs> Being single means you can play all the video games you want to outside of your job. I mean, I... <laughs> this was Germany. They are kind of hardcore over there, so... I... Yeah. <laughs> that was just a very interesting story. Um, I, you, I you told me to add it, so I added it. That is an interesting <laughs> one. i give you that one. Uh, I think... I don't remember if it said what game he was playing. I think it was probably Call of Duty, which there's no reason to drug anyone over Call of Duty. The game is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm, it's got its hardcore I'm inciting fans. arguments there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know. I've drugged myself. Well. Both to go to sleep and to stay up, so. <laughs> that's a little different. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's different territory. I guess. It's giving somebody else drugs unknowingly I guess <laughs> next order business um, 
this will be a quick one too, but it's it's interesting for anyone that is a Nintendo fan person. Um, I don't know if anyone saw it. It was last week, I think, when the the newest discovery of the Nintendo PlayStation came out. Um, they're still trying to verify if it's real or not. It looks real. Uh, in fact, they talked to, and I don't have the guy's name, but they talked to the guy that was pretty much head of development at Sony at the time. And he has pretty much... He hasn't said, yep, that's it, but he said, I, I like the mystery involved with not confirming or denying. Uh, the Sony Play... Or, not Sony PlayStation. The Nintendo PlayStation was a crossover between Super Nintendo and Sony at the time, for those that don't know. And if you don't, it's an interesting read. Nintendo was trying to uh, get into the, the bigger market before the PlayStation 1 ever launched and brokered a deal with Sony to make a disc-based Super Nintendo, basically. Yeah. What ended up happening was Nintendo went behind Sony's back to Philips, who was Sony's biggest competitor at the time, and gave them licensing to make Nintendo games on the CDI. If you don't know about the CDI, I have one in the other room. I've thought about trying to get it stream-worthy someday because it's an interesting <laughs> system. It's both got some very cool games on it, and some horribly, horribly bad ones. In fact, for Tintin, being a big Zelda fan, I feel like I have an obligation to stream the two Zelda games that came out on the seat. Or there were three. I only have two of them. I've played the third one, but I don't own it. The two Zelda games that I have are probably some of the worst games ever made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Control-wise, graphics-wise, character-wise, average across the board. I remember you brought the damn thing over and I tried to play anything on it. It's <laughs> a very strange system. It's quite different. Basically what happens is these prototypes of the Nintendo PlayStations came out or were made and then Sony said, well, screw you because you've now gone behind our back and licensed the games out. Sony comes out with the Sony PlayStation and ends up destroying Nintendo for a while, at least until the 3DS came out. And now Sony is what it is today as a gaming giant. You could partially say because Nintendo screwed them over. If things have been different, Sony may be part of Nintendo. And boy, wouldn't that have changed things? Yeah. Uh, Think about that one. I can't imagine what a future like that would be like. I can. You can? I, competition's good. If there was only two gaming company, two major systems out there... I don't know. Having three. I, well, and, and hell, you think about it. Microsoft hadn't stepped into the game at that stage. Yeah, that was well before. That was Sega. Sega was still around. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was Sega. For the most part, Sega, Nintendo, and, and then Sony. Um, Neo Geo was around, but they weren't very big. You had a lot of handhelds. <clears throat> but uh, an interesting point to note, though, is you're looking at this time as at the end of the Super Nintendo's lifespan. Look at what came out. You have Final Fantasy VI for Super Nintendo. The next Final Fantasy was PlayStation 1. And that was 7, yeah. widely regarded as one of the best Final Fantasies of all time. So, not by me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. But... Uh, imagine if that would have been a Nintendo license still. Um, you're looking at a very, very different playing field. I, you can't help but think that Nintendo made a huge mistake trying to get a little bit of extra money out of a deal and losing, losing their asses off, basically. So, yeah. food for thought. You know, don't screw, don't screw people over. It's just not a good idea. Um, you know, I, looking at it, the thing I, that I always is going to eat me up about this this rare find if it's not fake. He even had a cartridge. And uh, if I had that, I would be dying to try and find a way to hook things up so I could turn it on and see what that was. Well, the problem is he doesn't have a power cable for it. Yeah. He's going to and have he to go to a specialist to get one made. Yeah, when I read the article, the the guy basically had stated he doesn't want to try swapping in a power cable from a previous system that looks like it may fit. He doesn't want to 
possibly fry the thing yeah. if it could possibly still work. Yeah. Now, all I mean, did you post the article? I, I can post it. Um, supposedly, this um, surprisingly, the way it was found, it was in this guy's attic because his dad worked with a guy. Um, post the article here for those that want to read it if you haven't already searched for Nintendo PlayStation um, the guy worked as the CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment at the time president um, that's crazy to me can you imagine going up in your attic and finding a what's considered the holy grail of the system wars like a crossover <laughs> Nintendo Sony <laughs> like I didn't yeah. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Next. I'm going to let you take this one, too, to begin with. Let's okay. Talk about your Tony Hawk that you wanted to bring up. Yeah. Um, they're doing a new Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. And I, honestly, I'm not sure if this one should, shouldn't have maybe been done during rage mode. <laughs> um, you know, I... I I was a big fan of the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games when they were on PS1. Uh, I had friends in college that were a huge fan of, I think it was three on the PS2. Just play it for hours on end and were so good at it. Uh, gameplay wise, yeah, I mean, it was never graphically an amazing looking game. Gameplay wise, it was just tons of fun, the way you could chain everything together and all that. And I really hope they preserve that in the new one. I I'm sure they would try. Uh, the thing that I've been reading in, in some articles that have come out already, preliminary looking at gameplay videos and all that, is criticisms of the game looking like it has PS2 era graphics still, PS2 era quality, animations, the physics look wonky, and all that. And it's like, man, you know, that's a, it was a great, s I am, I am. Um, that was a great series. They're going to put it out as a AAA title with a $60 price tag. And I looked at gameplay videos myself, and I could see what they're talking about. Um, it's not out yet. And without feeling it, I mean, the game never looked great. Like, you'd go to do a grind on a rail, and you wouldn't land on it perfectly. You'd snap to it as long as you hit the buttons at the right time and all that stuff. And that may have been part of what made the gameplay work out so well and be so fun. So I guess it's yet to be seen, but um, I was kind of disappointed with a lot of the comments that I'm seeing about it ahead of time. Uh, did you watch the interview with Tony Hawk where they showed off segments of it? I had watched an interview with Tony Hawk where they showed off segments of it a long, like no, quite a while back. At this E3, at this past E3, they interviewed him. I think I'd watched interviews from before then. Um, they, and it they, was all very positive and all that. And... They interviewed him recently. Uh, I think it was either right before or right after E3. And they showed off... They're not final build, but they're pretty close. Basically the same video that you're, that you're talking about. <laughs> um, there's people saying that it's, it's basically PlayStation 2 graphics. That's the big shout-out, throw-out. Yeah. I'm not going to say it's that bad. Yeah, it's no. Definitely no, it's not. not up to par. It doesn't look like as I thought this was interesting. In the interview they asked him if it was running at 60 frames per second and he doesn't answer the question at all. He said, "Yeah, it looks great." <laughs> <laughs> now, Tony Hawk is not a game developer, but he's been a part of every one of his games, like a big part of every one of his games. He's taken a lot of active stuff in it in all of them. Yeah, in this interview I watched, he didn't talk about the frames. The guy asked him about the story. He said basically, "There's not a story." Now, there's always been a story in these games. It's always been off the wall, crazy shit. Yeah, I there's mean, not even a story. <laughs> um, if you look at the videos, the backgrounds are—they look like old skyboxes from like an old, <laughs> like 1.6 CS skyboxing. Yeah, you know, something I was going to say is it reminded me of old CS in skyboxing. 
the textures themselves, while they might be of high resolution, are very flat. The levels are yeah. very just wide open and kind of plain. I, they all, it looked to me that the, the, all the footage that I've saw that I saw and I looked up a lot of it. It all looked to me like beta builds, placeholders. They had uh, apparently you can jump through fire and your board catches on fire, and the flames looked like Diablo One flames, which were beautiful <laughs> back in the day, back in 1998. But now they. They're all, they're flat, like you said. It's it's not a it doesn't give you an impression of depth. It's just a flat bump map on a <laughs> yeah. on a texture. I, if the game plays amazing, I, I enjoy these games. I don't know shit about skating, skateboarding. I don't know a damn thing. Yeah. But games were always fun because they were great to get people around. Again, couch co op and just screw with stuff, and break yeah. things, and crash. Uh, that being said, the footage that I looked at did not look fun at all. Like, again, I'm hoping that they're just holding back a lot of the newer builds and they're showing old stuff. I don't know why you would do that if you're trying to hype your game, but... You know, another speculation similar to that that I'd read is that, well, maybe they're, because it's going to be on last-gen and this-gen consoles. Maybe the videos were from last-gen, but again, why would you do that if you're hyping the game? Right. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, a lot of money had to be thrown at this. Yeah, uh, I don't doubt there's been a pretty considerable budget thrown at it. They've always sold pretty damn well. I mean, this isn't BMX Triple X here. We're not talking about some <laughs> offshoot, you know, game that basically sold itself based on porn. We're talking about a game that has Tony Hawk's name on it. You know, I, I don't know. It, it is strange. You brought that up, and I hadn't really looked into it because I hadn't heard about it. But when I, the more I read, I just was going, "Man, this is <laughs> this just looks weird. I can't believe this." But you know, <laughs> stranger things have happened. Yeah. All right. Last of our topics for uh, this show before we get into viewer questions. I uh, Skippenheims does not know about this. I added this today. Uh -oh. However, he may know about the actual topic, but we have not pre-discussed this. It is regarding something that was brought up on the last show, though. So, Skevin Himes, I don't know if you know about this, but... Gearbox wants to make another Duke Nukem. Yes! <laughs> yes! Do uh, it! If you remember from our last show, one of the games that Skevin Himes wanted to see a new game in the series was Duke Nukem. You know, <clears throat> I, I kind of I kinda had a feeling it was going to happen. And the reason I say that is because right after Forever happened, which was such a disaster, Gearbox got their hands on the IP. Hmm? I Why actually have a quote about that if you'd like me to read it. Yes, please do. Randy Pitchford, who is the boss of Gearbox Studios. I don't know what boss means. I assume <laughs> CEO or some kind of lead dev. Yeah. Quote, I did not acquire the franchise merely so people could experience Duke Nukem forever again. End quote. Awesome. He explained uh, when asked if another Duke Nukem title, title would be made. Quote, that was sort of the toll to pay to give Duke Nukem a chance at a future. End quote. Awesome. And Gearbox, I think they could do it. Uh, Gearbox will They're not be developing that it. Wacky shooter Gearbox stuff. will not be developing it. <laughs> well, they'll still Gear know. They'll oversee something. They better make it right or I'm going to cut somebody. Gearbox is seeking a developer to do it for them. Or to co-develop. Yeah, hopefully it's co-develop and they've got a lot of... Uh, I think you know, now Gearbox has said they're just too busy to handle it. That's the problem. Uh now, here's the thing that I have to say about this. We had differing opinions on Duke Nukem Forever. You were a huge Duke Nukem fan to begin with. I was not. I played the game. You played the game. You said it was a pretty bad game, but you still enjoyed your way through it. Yeah. I thought it was freaking terrible. I couldn't even finish the game. <laughs> I hated it. It was boring. It was terrible. It didn't even feel as good as Duke Nukem 3D, which I didn't like Duke Nukem 3D either. But I liked it better than Forever. 
I loved Duke Nukem. At least 3D, 3D had functioning multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I liked Forever. <laughs> in in to to bring up a, a prior topic, um, <laughs> I liked Forever kind of for the same reason some people may end up kind of half liking some things about Devil's Third. There were some things. It had the cheesiest humor that made me chuckle quite a bit, but you expect that from Duke Nukem. Right. And and there were some things about it that were so bad, they were almost good. <laughs> but I'm not going to sit here and say it. It was a game. shoddy game. I just had fun with it. It was a game that definitely showed exact signs that I think you're going to see with Devil's Third. It's gone through multiple development cycles. It's past hands. It's gone. Development's been too long. Uh, we have someone asking about Reckless is asking about Star Citizen, which I'll make some comments at during the, the viewer part. Um, I hope the same thing does not happen to Star Citizen. The development cycle is starting to just get ridiculous. Not Duke Nukem Forever ridiculous, but keep in mind there's been way more money thrown at Star Citizen. But anyway, that's a whole different topic. We'll get to that. Um, is this a bad idea? No. Duke Nukem's a long-running series. I think Gearbox probably paid low dollar for the franchise label since after how hard of a flop <laughs> exactly the uh <laughs> we'll see uh gearbox is not going to be doing the development which that could be really bad yeah, outsourcing that, that, development that is not doing part well of the right news kind of scares me yeah um i mean it could be okay but i would really really hope that they're extremely hands-on as the publisher well did i at least make you happy to bring that up you did to see, I didn't insult I Skiven Homes today. I actually made I him happy. That some hope for the future now. Make sure this VOD goes on YouTube because that's never <laughs> going to happen again. Yeah. You're going to have to help me get it. Okay. Yeah, you can just export it. And... <laughs> so um, I got two viewer questions here from that have been posed over the week. Um, one of them... I don't. I guess kind of goes more towards me because I've streamed more of the Tales games than you have. Although, so you've played Zillion One. Yeah. Have you played any of the other ones? I've messed around in Symphonia. I've messed around in Hearts R. Um, oh, I didn't know you haven't gotten Hearts real are. deep into them, but I've got both of them, and I've poked around in them a little bit just to check things out on the side while I've been playing other games. They're ones I'm definitely going to get to, as well as Zillia too. <clears throat> okay. Um, the question that was given to me was, do you think Tales of Berseria is going to be good or bad with the whole play as one character thing they're doing? There's two answers to this. One, it's pretty typical for Tales, uh, for Bandai Namco, when they're releasing Tales characters to only talk about one character at a time. I sincerely doubt Berseria is going to be one character. It's going to be one main character, probably, like... Uh, going back before Zillia. Zillia had Jude and, and Mila both as main characters, but all the previous ones were basically one character and then a party of supporting characters. I think... I'm fairly certain that's what's going to happen here. Uh, now, I don't know a lot about Zestiria. I've tried to steer away from learning too much about it because that is going to be a day one stream title for me. Um... They kind of, from what I've read, they've kind of screwed themselves because they built up a, a main character and talked about her a lot, and then apparently three hours into the game, she leaves the game, and someone else takes over as main character. I could be getting that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's what's going on. Um, I think, hopefully, Bandai... Here's what's going to happen. Zestiria's going to come out. They, they've done all this marketing for this one character who disappears, another character takes over. People don't like that character as much. They're going to release... The original character is DLC to replay the game with. That's what I would consider they're doing. Um, they will have party members in this game. Every Tales game has had party members. I cannot fathom it, that they would change that formula. I, I read a few articles that, based on some comments made and what they've been able to see on the game so far, are speculating... Go back and read they, release for any Tales game. They always do. This is a pattern that they do. Yeah. Well, uh, it, they, they talk about one character and they talk that one character up. And then months in, they'll say, oh, by the way, there's also this person that does this. I could be wrong. 
I just don't see Tales breaking a series. It's been a party-based series since its inception. I don't see that going away. Yeah, and uh, you know something I would add is I don't think it'll necessarily make it a bad game if they did that. Could have you seen the awesome. character? Have you looked at? No, nah, I haven't. I haven't looked that far into. It. I just read some articles. Um, you know, I have a Mila obsession, right? Oh I'm God. <laughs> Look, uh, <laughs> Berseria might get a rare collector's edition out of me if it, if the character art keeps going the way it is, because she looks like a badass. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't think it'll necessarily make it a bad game. I do do think, and looking looking in chat, I already see some comments that were leading up to what I was going to say. I do think if that really does happen, you're going to see a lot of people that are semi unhappy with it or say it's not really I just don't game. see that you know there's too much party interaction in Tales games the skits have always been how are you going to have skits if you don't have supporting party members I would say that people probably have seen the fact that they're only talking about one character right now and no other party is mentioned and then making some assumptions maybe I don't know I just don't see that happening so uh, thank you, Sax, for that question. Appreciate questions. Um, last question before we talk about Star Citizen. Characters that deserve crossover games. So, characters that are not the main character in a game or series that should become the main character in a game. I've got... A few. I had had some uh, kind of a hard time thinking on this one, but I do have a few. One of the first ones that came to mind for me, uh, and probably the most significant of the few that I've got, would be Terry Bogard from the Fatal Fury fighting franchise. Um, I loved those games as fighters. I loved him in the games. I watched quite a few of the Fatal Fury animes, loved his character. I'd love to, honestly, I'd love to play a JRPG with him as the main character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, I could be wrong. He is not as a main character, but I, someone that's played the game, there's a DS game that brings, that mashes a bunch of characters together into a turn based tactical RPG. Is he in that one? I have it, but I haven't beaten it. I can't remember if he's in it or not. Uh, so hopefully, I maybe someone in know. chat's played that game. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, so Terry Bogard in an RPG. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. Another one I would like to see. I'd like to see Alvin from Tales of Zillia get a game. I actually, when I was thinking about this list, uh, other characters from Zillia came to mind the only reason why i would say no is because it did get it is the, the tales game that got a sequel and they all reoccur in it so i feel like that was kind of a throw out to all of them but yeah alvin was fun i liked alvin alvin yeah. in the second one is much better than alvin in the first one by the way project really? x zone thank you thank you is he in project x zone that is the game I was thinking of, but I could not remember if he's in it or not because it has, like, what, 50 characters from all kinds of series is in it? It's kind of crazy. I'm just kind of skimming games he's been in on that wiki article, and I don't see it. Alvin in the first Tales of Zillia would not be someone I would want to see a recurring character of, but the transition between the first one to the second one, definitely. You know, was, honestly, even the the one, you know, because I've only played the first one, so I'm basing it off the guy that I knew from the first one. And it was some of the, you know, he, he's very he was kind of a bastard. He was kind of a bastard. He actually wasn't kind of a bastard. He was really a bastard. Um, and reason. he seemed to flip-flop, wishy-washy. You didn't know what to think of him. And that always that type of stuff always piques my interest. So you like backstabbing assholes, is what you're saying. Hey, hey, he always came through in the end. <laughs> uh, if I had to throw one more out, and I don't know, 
this one a lot. I'm sure a lot of people would really be like, what the hell's wrong with you? I'd play, he, he was my favorite character from the Final Fantasy 13 series, and I would play a game led by Saz if it didn't suck. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say Snow. I was about I to thought cut about the stream saying off. that just to, I was about just to, to send you over the edge, but I decided not to. Or Hope. No, hope. Hope. Hope's the one. <laughs> hope gets his, hope own his own game. game. Oh, Final God. Fantasy 13-4. Hope <laughs> returns. Do it. I'm not going to buy it, but I want to read about uh, it. All hope is lost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um I want to make a quick comment. Someone in chat terminal mentioned Gino from Super Mario RPG. Actually, we brought up Super Mario RPG in our last stream. Um Nintendo owns or SquareSoft owns the rights to that character and Nintendo owns the rights to the game. So the only way that could happen is if Squaresoft and Nintendo started working together again, which would be amazing. Just saying. Would love for that to happen. Okay, I got a couple, actually. I put a lot of thought, I probably put more thought into this question than any of the other ones that we've talked about today. Because I have a couple of really good ones. I even thought of names. So if there's any video game developers out there that want <laughs> good IPs... About to just get some licensing and get these done. <laughs> the first one's for you, Skibbon Himes. Ooh. I mean, I really feel <laughs> I really feel like a Tipo game would just be Oh god <laughs> damn it. I, I even have a name for the Tipo I'm game. I'm gonna drive so over Tipo there gets steak knife. <laughs> Tipo gets a standalone game. I guess Elise would have to be in it because technically they're one and the same, but she'd be a minor bit player. Oh my God. I even thought of a name so we could have <laughs> Tipo's Bazanga Bash. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I feel like that is just waiting to go off the store shelves. Don't you? Um, no. <laughs> no. So you don't think I should copyright that? No, well, I don't think you should. I couldn't because it's got a copyrighted character in it, but I really feel like that would be... That's the not a new tales. They need to cancel Tales of Berseria, and just give no. Tipo. <laughs> no, do not listen to this man. <laughs> Good lord! I don't know why all the why you have all the Tipo hate, man. I, you should welcome Tipo into your heart. Okay, I have I have a counter question for you. Mm. Why do you have all the Moogle hate? I don't hate Moogles. I hate Mog. Oh, oh. I actually you like it's, about them it's just Mog. I don't like Mog. Mog, okay, well, so, Mog, Mog from thirteen. I hated. 13-2. Next game. Uh, <laughs> starring Limmel. <laughs> a recurring character in my chat. So, a new game with Limmel as the main character, but she's grown up, which means she's like 35, but a 16-year-old. <laughs> and it would be called uh, Limmel, subtitled, Burning the Enemies of My Faith. I feel like that, that, that is a... A perfect game title. <clears throat> so, Limmel, Burning the Enemies of My Faith. I'm sure uh, Sax, <laughs> Sax will have to agree with me on that one. Uh, uh, so, Tipo oh. first. Obviously, you like to cause others pain. And then Limmel, <laughs> you like to cause yourself pain as well. I like to cause myself pain. I feel like the pain should be passed around and fair to everybody. <laughs> uh, all right, the last of my troll ones... This is for Skibbon and I, and I both. It'd feature <laughs> feature Razzly. You know, okay. you know I had to work Razzly in there somewhere. <laughs> for those that weren't around, we dual stream Chrono Cross on the weekends and we killed Razzly on accident, but I say it's not an accident because I don't like fairies. So the game would be Razzly <laughs> and the title would be Fairy Feeding Frenzy. Oh, God. Oh... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Does is the object of the game to kill Razzly or Razzly? Yeah, it's to feed fairies to any plant time monsters. Possible. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a recurring Razzly murder simulator. Exactly. Okay, I will agree to a Tipo game if it has a similar premise. <laughs> Let's just take all three characters I just mentioned and all throw them into a murder simulation game and then call it a day. How's that? I think that'll work. 
Uh, okay, seriously though, um, I have three uh, that I would like to see, and actually someone stole one of mine, <laughs> Ten Ten. Zelda. Zelda has only been the main character in two games, and neither one of them were released by Nintendo. They were both CDI games. <laughs> The same CDI <laughs> games I was just talking about. Um, I would love to see, you know, the, the one of the was the second game was the adventure or the Legend of the first game was Legend of Zelda, but yeah. Zelda was not even in it. Basically, she was a princess at the very end. Yeah. Um, in the CDI games where you play as Zelda, she wields a sword and throws bombs. Now you can play as Zelda in. Hyrule Warriors, but I don't count that because that's not... She's not the main character in the game. I'm talking about a game in the vein of most of the other Zelda games where it's a third-person action-adventure game and Zelda is the main character with all of the staples that she's come to get, including the Sheik transformations and everything else. I think that would be amazingly cool. Why cannot? Why can't they do that? That... I like Link, don't get me wrong, but I'm tired of Link. Shit, let's put Zelda back in it. Don't make her a pirate princess. Don't make her a god... <laughs> I mean, they have used Zelda in so many bastardizations, but they've never given her a true character to play. I would love that. Um, remake the CDI games. I swear to God, I will stream one of those. If I can get the cables, I need an S-Video cable. S-Video to HDMI. I don't know if they make that. I don't even know if they make that. I will stream one of those and make you people suffer through that crap with me. It's terrible. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to 24-hour stream it. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, second one for me. I think you'll agree with me on this one. We can't get a true Chrono Trigger sequel. We know that's not going to happen. But, man, it would be nice to have a either a prequel based on Frog. Just Frog. His backstory as Glenn into the transition where he became Frog up to the point where the main series picks up and he gets picked up by the party. Because there's so yeah. much room for the fight between he and <clears throat> Megas to go on and on and on through the years after the curse and even before the curse. Because they did fight Magus's army before Cyrus was cursed in the first place. Yeah. Frog is very easily my favorite character in Chrono Trigger. I, I love. I just feel like that character could have his. He'd actually be strong enough, much like Zelda, to have his own game. Yeah. And it would be all new material. No one's written it, so Square would not have to deal with the pressure of is it a prequel to Chrono Trigger? Is it a sequel to Chrono Trigger? Nope. It's. It, you could even leave out the part with Glenn as Glenn and just do Frog. I would be the happiest person in the world. Yeah, and with that, you know, obviously, you would get more Magus, so that would make me happy. You would I mean, get granted, more Granted, he, he would be uh, entirely as a enemy, but... Well, either that or a silent antagonist, meaning the stuff in the game would pertail, pertain to him, but he may not necessarily be involved, because then you're, right. you're having to get back into that Chrono Trigger storyline, which I don't think Square is ever going to write again. It could be all against Ozzy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy. All right, my Ozzy last one. Most people slow. probably are not going to get, but I do feel strongly about it. There's 15 Final Fantasy games, about to be 15 Final Fantasy games in the main series, countless other ones. Um, there was one I think for the Wii that was basically what I'm about to mention, but they did it as an action game, not a real RPG. I would love a Final Fantasy told from a villain's perspective. It would be something completely new. And I even have the villain picked out that I would like. It's not going to be Kefka or any of the other ones that were really fleshed out because you can't do that. Yeah. You know who I'm going to say? You've never played the first one. No, yeah. I don't know who you're going to say. <laughs> Does anyone in here, has anyone played Final Fantasy 1 and remember Garland? So Garland is the first Final Fantasy villain. 
you meet him literally two hours into the game if it takes you that long you whip his ass immediately he's easy he happens before the actual title screen of the game that he's meant to be stupidly easy but I even have a title for this game See, I came up with titles for mine. I think about these things. So, title for the game would be. I don't. It wouldn't be called Final Fantasy because that it would be something to do with villains, and then it would be heroes or just home invaders. Because <laughs> you literally, as the the group of four heroes, go into this guy's castle, and he has kidnapped a princess. But you pretty much just show up in his castle and murder him, and then leave. That's it. The castle's like one hallway. You walk down the hallway, you kill him, and then you leave. <laughs> I, something about that, man. I, that would be so... I, I just... I want to see... Now, if you're a follower of 8-Bit or Nuclear Theater that did the 8-Bit Final Fantasy webcomic, Garland is a very, very strong recurring character in the game. He's a complete moron. Uh, yeah, I, I want a game based on Garland. I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> You know, that kind of made me think of some characters from Final Fantasy as a series that I wouldn't mind seeing get some <laughs> something like that. God. <laughs> Who? Depending on which game and which iteration of which game, but Vix, Biggs, or Vix and Wedge, or Biggs and Wedge. They're all of them, though. I know, but just give them their own game. <laughs> They're always Biggs, horrible. Biggs, Vix, and Wedge. Just the, the trio, huh? Well, isn't Biggs and Vi Vix the same person? Yeah. But they've yeah, they, they, they named differently using... in different games? Yeah. Yeah. Because Biggs and Wedge was a little too much of a giveaway. Yeah. Too, too Star Wars-y. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got like two minutes maybe, three minutes before my... Guys, I will be starting my uh, Suikoden 3 stream directly after this, after about a two-minute break to change equipment out. Um, Star Citizen uh, was mentioned. Do you know anything about Star Citizen, Skibs? Honestly, I cannot say that I know much. <clears throat> it just passed $86 million in crowdfunding, I think. Holy cow. $86 million. It's either It's either 80 or 86. I know it's in the 80s. Um... Look, I want to back Star Citizen. I think if the game ever comes out, it's going to be really, really amazing. But here's my problem. Um, Star Citizen has gone through... The game is going to be done in modules based on how much funding they received. The modules are so far behind at this point. I... I'll be amazed if the game ever comes out. It's just taken too, too long. I think they capped the crowdfunding at sixty-five million. That was the last stretch goal. That was twenty million ago. <clears throat> Keep in mind, Star Wars: The Old Republic, I think, cost somewhere around three hundred million. It was the most expensive game to develop ever, but it was fully voice acted by actual, vo real, known voice actors. That's where most of the budget went, with cinematics and voice acting. I played the game for several months. It was not very good, so that was just a waste of money. <clears throat> they have $100 million almost. Completely out of fan pocket. Fans' pockets. No studio backing. And they haven't released anything beyond, like, a dogfight trailer, and that's it. And it's been, I don't know how many, at least a couple of years now. Does it have the initial start? Uh, you know, I'm seeing that possibly 16. I'm looking at multiple articles. CID disputes indefinitely <coughs> delayed label given to Star Citizen. Yep. You know. 2012 was when funding started. October of 2012. So it's almost been three years, and I, I haven't seen much. I've seen... The game is supposed to be kind of like... Remember, did you play Earth and Beyond? I can't remember. I played the hell out of Earth and Beyond. No. It's basically a, a starship MMO where you can actually go down... It, it's kind of like... Uh, what you call it? Eve? 
Uh, well, no, the the games come out at the end of the year. Uh, we also talked about No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. It's basically an MMO, MMO version of No Man's Sky. Um, I don't know. I got a lot of hope for it, but at this point, with it being this long, and they still haven't released anything worthwhile for people to look at, they're gonna. St- I know they've already started having it. More and more people are gonna start rescinding their payments. They're going mm-hmm. to cancel their their backing, and any work that's gone into the game. <clears throat> yeah, I, I just I don't see it ending well. If you are a supporter and you have put your money into Star Citizen. I hope the best for you. Um, I'll withhold any other judgment until I see actual real player footage of the game. It's been three years in development now. You should have something to show me. Virtual reality glasses in games. It can be a gimmick. It won't last long, much like 3D. And then we'll be past that. Yeah, that's... um unfortunately what i think is going to be the case could be wrong i would like to be wrong um i actually bought into the 3d the last round of 3d gaming technology the invidious 3d uh technology and when a game was made for it it was great um i had the benefit of being one of the rare individuals who really didn't ever deal with any eye strain that's a big barrier for entry when you can't sit there and play the game comfortably I didn't have that problem. Tons of people do. Um, you know, a lot of par- problems people had with it was they simply just didn't want to wear a pair of glasses. Even if it was the nice passive glasses that are polarized, you don't have to wear heavier shutter glasses or anything like that. They didn't want to wear a pair of glasses to, to play a game. Right. I think you're going to have a lot of people that don't want to wear a headset. They're fine playing it on a monitor. Um, um. I'm mixed on VR. Look, I, I like the idea of virtual reality as much as anyone else. I think it's a great concept. I think it works great in an arcade that's set up with a bunch of expensive machinery and equipment that you don't own. Turntable treadmills and stuff. <clears throat> Here's the problem. <laughs> I've seen, uh, in fact, there's a, I don't remember where I saw it. It's on YouTube somewhere. You can look it up. They basically took uh, Jedi Academy, like the, the old, old Jedi Knight 3 came out back in like, 2006 or whatever and they have uh, with many cameras um, modded the game to be basically a lightsaber uh, VR test with the little or the little drone that shoots the lasers and you deflect them with the lightsaber and it's a full room VR setup so it's got mats and we're talking 10 by 15 a huge setup now that looks cool as shit but do you have a room in your house you can set aside to set it up? I don't. No. Most people aren't. Because it requires a dedicated space you're going to use for nothing else. You have to mount these cameras everywhere. You have to have motion capture stuff running. You have to have a computer heavy enough, you know, hefty enough to handle it. And that's using very simple graphics, not full what we're used to. Yeah. So Oculus Rift, uh, I won't lie, I'm, I'm interested in it when the price actually gets named and it comes down a little bit. I have a feeling it's going to launch at like 600, 700 bucks. I don't have that to spend. If you're a horror yeah. junkie, I'd <clears throat> say go for it. Uh, I saw some people, some footage of people playing uh, some new horror games coming out at E3, and they were basically wearing a headset, and they said that it was just the most terrifying thing ever. That's putting you, immersing you fully in a game that has the ability to immerse you by being very realistic. But how realistic is it going to be to sit with a controller in your hand and swing a sword? It's going to break your immersion, and it's not going to feel right. You know, so what's yeah. the point? Now, if if you don't have hefty <clears throat> controls where you have ten buttons to remember and you're not doing all these complex movements, if you're just simply trying to stay alive or pick up things and look at them like a horror game, I could see it being fairly good. Uh, I would also say, this is going to sound really strange, but bear with me, the ability for VR to pick up and be big kind of depends, I don't know if we've talked about this on stream, but I know I've told you about this, we've talked about it, Skiven and I before, it will depend very heavily on the porn industry. 
<laughs> uh, seriously, DVDs became big because of the porn industry. The porn industry dominates new media. If that picks up a lot for VR, I could see it going somewhere. <laughs> if no one else picks it up, if it's just a niche thing for certain games, it'll last two, three years. No one's going to remember it. It's going to be too expensive, and everyone's going to move on. Kind of like the way everyone's gone now with the 4K resolutions on monitors. I mean... <laughs> so, so the takeaway is we need to spend more money on porn. <laughs> no. Is that the take? <laughs> the, the takeaway is the entertainment industry dominates everything and that's one section of the entertainment industry. So <laughs> Go look it up. It's an interesting uh, I'm not I'm not I'm it's not doubting. Movie. I'm not doubting you on the That's on why that. 3D 3D was too filming 3D takes too much. Uh filming 3D requires at least two cameras if not three, depending on how you're going to do it. And it's very expensive. VR is a lot cheaper because it's simulated. Yeah. So, I don't know. I have a feeling, though, I don't see a lot of game developers getting behind. And that's a, a incendiary thing to say because all you see right now is, oh, we have Oculus Rift support in our game. It's not yeah. full Oculus. It's not fully in the game. They're doing it as a, yeah, we, we can do it. It's going to look very bare bones, but we can do it. Yeah, and well, and that was a lot of the same kind of rhetoric you heard when NVIDIA's, three, NVIDIA's 3D Vision was new. You know, you had a lot of, had quite a few games yeah. that it was they also super expensive. That we're going to patch in support. Let's be fair. They had quite a few games that said, oh, we're going we're gonna to have support on launch. And they did, but it didn't work right. You had very few games that worked right with it well, without it, doing tons of fiddling yourself the to make barrier stuff. for entry to 3d was extremely high well yeah the monitors it yeah. was expensive as hell it was very technically complex and it was goofy you had to wear some freaking glasses if they could have done the 3ds screen in a monitor size which would have been insanely expensive it may have sold a little bit better but not much i don't know you can't have a barrier for entry be that high. Yeah. People are already split between two or three console systems they're going to pick up, or a PC if they're a PC gamer, which equals the cost of two or three console systems. Yeah. They're not going to want to buy a bunch of hardware on top of that. I mean, it's just... And it w here's another question. How are you going to stream it? You can't. And streaming is becoming huge. I mean, streaming is... <laughs> You know, I don't know. In you're not going to buy something you can't stream. No, yeah, I mean we've talked. We've I'm talked not going to buy something I can't stream. To to some other consoles and whatnot. Um, and I mean, technically, you could with 3D. I don't know about Oculus Rift. With 3D, you could probably figure something out to where it would only stream one lens of the two. I don't know. I mean, it could be done. There's nothing that supports it. It's going to be wonky anyway. It, it's just not, it's not good. It's not good. 3D has been tried multiple times throughout the history of entertainment, um, not just video games. It always comes. It's really popular for a little while, and then it falls off. And it comes back. It's really well, popular for a little while, and then it falls off. The other thing that we're not bringing up is the fact that we don't live in, Skip and I and I don't live in an area where you have internet cafes or data, digital play centers and stuff for gaming or for uh, land type organizations. In a bigger city, maybe you get some people, some places that pop up and buy 10 or 12 of these headsets and do land based uh, VR gaming. But again, that's not going to dom that's not going to sell the games. That's not going to dominate the market. That's not going to take over anything. That's going to be like laser gonna, tag. It's not going to put keep these companies who have spent massive amounts of money developing these things in business. Yeah. So that that turned that into a very long discussion. We could both <laughs> be wrong about that. I don't know. I, I hope I'm wrong. I I hope I'm I hope I'm wrong too. Look. I've seen gameplay of Oculus Rift in 1D or, or 2D, and it looks great. 
I just think the immersion disconnect is going to kill you when you go to anything that's more simple than pick up an object and look at it, like you see in most horror games or just story-based puzzle games like Rift, Riven, stuff like that. I think it would work great for that kind of thing. But again, Call of Duty? Or do you really feel like you're going to want to be turning your head around in Call of Duty while you sit motionless with a controller? I just don't see that happening. I don't see yeah. that being a big thing. The only way I could see it being in, and this is, I was going to say, a good application of using the technology in Call of Duty, and I should redact saying good application, an application of it to where it would work, would be to basically turn the VR headset into a glorified 3D monitor that's strapped onto your face. And you're still controlling everything the normal way you would. You don't get any, you know, head looking left or right control yeah, or any of that. You know, it turns into a, it's a glorified monitor at that point. Well, then can you really call that VR? No. Because, I, I, yeah, that's I would why, say yeah, then you're, no, not, that's what you're I'm, taking you know, on VR. I think it's kind of my point. You might as well just play it on a monitor. Uh, let me put something else. <laughs> can you imagine doing anything type, any type of Twitch-based gaming on it? Fast reaction gaming on it? We're gamers. We're not athletes here. We're not people that are known for moving around very quickly. You know, most of us, I would say. Somebody's going to hurt, hurt themselves. That's the other thing, too. You got this thing people strapped on People hurt themselves face. with the Wii. <laughs> you got this thing strapped on your face, and you're in a room making movements, knocking stuff off the table, do kicking you, your dog. Do you know how many people hurt themselves at Wii Bowling? Dude, I've watched quite a few videos of people <laughs> hurt themselves, hurt their TV, hurt through hurt somebody remote that's standing TV, yeah. close to them they didn't realize was there. <laughs> I just, yeah, I mean that's the other thing. Like, <laughs> I can self depreciating humor is great. Look, I, I used to play some sports. You played more than I did, but I'm not into video gaming because I want to be moving around all the time <laughs> and. I think it would be great to do like maybe 30 minutes and then you're done and you're doing normal gaming. But do you see someone spending four hours aiming around a room with their arms? Because I just don't see it. I... There were certain Wii games that I could not play for long periods of time because they required you to be aiming constantly at the screen with one arm up. And it it was tiring. It Muscle memory that you haven't used in a while. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I like again. I think we both agree. We'd like to be proven wrong on that, but I, I, I watched the three D boom go by, and that was laughably short. So. Yeah, and I bought into it and experienced it, and can agree on every front. Well, you enjoyed so. it, but you threw a lot more money at it than I think you. I did. enjoyed it, but at the same time, you didn't. I can't sit there and lie and say, to enjoy it, I didn't spend countless hours fidgeting with shit to make it work right with Fallout 3, for example. You know, because there are so many graphical anomalies yeah. and artifacts and, you know, okay, everything else in the game is render rendering in 3D perfectly. Somehow it's showing the water <laughs> effects right in front of your damn face. Like, I remember that. Because I went like over that. to your, I went and played it on your rig one time. For, yeah, uh, I think it was Resident Evil Five and Fallout. Yeah, and they were both Resident like Evil Five. I remember worked pretty well. Fallout and that. For those that haven't played it before, it kind of reminded me as if you were looking through a window from very close, looking through a window at someone on the other side of the window. You can tell that they're in three dimensions, but it was very f fake looking three dimensions. Oh yeah, it, it's very fake looking. So. Yeah. I had a feeling that was sort of our line being brought up. Yeah, when we get attachments that mount into our skulls and, and get brain synapses into games, then we know we've got it made. Or some evil person then locks us all into the game and holds us hostage. Yeah. <laughs> um, if y'all have any questions or topics for next week, be sure to either message them to myself or Skibbenheims on Twitch. Uh, tweet them to us. It's the lower names at BP Skibbenheims at Keldon, or you can email me at Keldon at gmail.com. Uh, please include your Twitch username if you want me to give you a shout out for asking the question. Uh, that being said, Skibs, why don't you take it for about two minutes and say what you got, uh, what you're playing now, and what you're about to play, and we'll call this a well, wrap. Well, uh, as, as I was last time, uh, I'm still. <laughs> 
plugging away at Persona 4. Um, it's gotten very, very interesting. I think we're reasonably close to, to knocking that one out. And as has been my plan stated here for a while after that, I'm going to move into Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Um, loved those games. So pumped for Fallout 4 to come out. And I think it'll be a lot of fun to stream them. And it, it's been long enough since I last played them that uh, they'll feel somewhat fresh in that respect. Uh, you going to do any, uh, are those going to be modless or what's your plan? Yeah, modless for the most, for the, for the most part, I might, mods? I might do some slight texture mods. I don't know. I'm really leaning on doing them mm -hmm. totally modless. Few people that watch my stream that I've talked to have requested that I at least, uh, install the iron sight mod for fallout three, but I don't know. I'm just leaning towards modless. The way the game was meant to be played. I would I recommend there is a mod that auto saves your game about every 15 seconds. Well, apparently, a lot of people are having trouble with current hardware having the game crash on them a lot. Yeah, that's a pretty good mod I think to run. Uh, prevent your since you're streaming, you want as little downtime as possible through crashes. So, yeah. Um, are you going to be doing? You just going to be playing it the way you want to play it? Or are you planning on doing some challenges like going through a way you've never played before? Maybe a, a fist run. I, I have considered love, not necessarily doing a fist run, but I've considered doing a melee run. I would I love to see a melee run. Anything melee wise in either of the games. I, um, I yeah, think I'm should. considering doing something a little different. Although I loved the game so much, I would still have a blast playing them the normal way. Yeah, I just I, I think a, a good, interesting run would be really interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah. my two sons. All right. Um, uh, or, yeah, go ahead. You can catch Skiven Himes on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday on his channel. Um, and then Saturdays, as I mentioned, we dual stream. Currently, we're streaming Chrono Cross. I think we probably have one or two. One or two, depending on how far we get the next one. One or two of those left before we move away from Chrono Cross. Yeah, I, I don't know how long it is. I'm avoiding looking it up, but I'm thinking we got... One more. Uh, it depends on how much the bosses manhandle us. I don't know. We haven't wiped in the last two streams, though. Yeah. So, I'm feeling pretty beastly. <laughs> I don't know. That that Transformer guy we fought last time was kind of scary. <laughs> um, so that will be happening at 6 o'clock Central on this, this coming Saturday. Uh... I stream Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Because um, I'm just more dedicated. No. <laughs> uh, I'm currently working on Suikoden so 3. Oh, we're about, on fire. We're about 37 hours in at this point. Um, going for all 108 stars. I don't know if we'll actually get it, but... Uh, directly after finishing the Suikoden 3 run, I will be moving into a Final Fantasy Marathon. We're going to play 10, uh, 10, then 12, then we're going to drop back to 9. And if I have enough time before October, we'll play 8. And that's going to be interesting. I hate 8, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> Definitely playing 10, 12, and 9, though, all in a row. Um... And we, we both start at 6 o'clock Central Time. said he's on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. I'm on Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. So I think we're going to wrap this up. Uh, it's going to be about five minutes for me to transfer equipment around, then I'm going to start the Suikoden stream up. If you all want to give me that amount of time, uh, Skivenheims, it has been fun as always, sir. Yes. Once again, another one down. And... We'll be doing it again, I guess. I guess are we settled settle on Wednesdays for it's sure? It's settled on Wednesdays, yeah. It'll be okay. this will start every Wednesday at uh five thirty. Q So follow us on Twitter. Uh we have Steam groups too. Um uh, we'll see y'all. Well, I'll see y'all in a few minutes. Skipping times, have a good one. Yep, y'all have a good night. <laughs>